A student's basic understanding of biology must include a knowledge of water, an essential ingredient of all life. Water also has important properties that contribute to its crucial role in biology as well. In this video, we'll first review the water molecule itself in terms of its structure and how that structure contributes to the property called polarity. From there, we'll look at the hydrogen and covalent bonding that takes place between other water molecules and between the atoms of the water molecule itself. I'll complete the video with two more important properties of water, namely its temperature stabilizing effects and its role as the universal solvent. Remember to try your recall skills with the nursing school admission test type questions included at the end of the video. So why is water so important in biology? Well, if you look at current evolutionary theory, life arose in water, making water an essential ingredient in all living things. All living things need and use water, whether or not their habitat is water or land-based. All biological organisms utilize water via its intake, distribution, filtration, and excretion. Water is also the most abundant substance in humans. Consequently then, water plays a critical role in biology. But to understand more of why water is so uniquely important, let's take a look at its molecular structure. Let's quickly review some details from the structural model of water. The molecule consists of three atoms arranged in the approximate configuration that you see illustrated here. The single oxygen atom here has a weight of 15.99 grams in atomic mass units and corresponds to element number 8 of the periodic table of elements. Though it has 8 electrons, its outer shell contains the 6 electrons available for bonding with other atoms of which I am placing around the oxygen atom in our model. Oxygen shares two of those six electrons with the hydrogen atoms via covalent bonding, leaving four unbonded electrons remaining. These four electrons are shared with hydrogen atoms of other water molecules through the process of hydrogen bonding rather than covalent bonding. The two hydrogen atoms are located here situated about 104.4 degrees apart from one another. Hydrogen has a weight of 1.00 grams in atomic mass units and corresponds to element number one of the periodic table. Hydrogen has only one electron and therefore only one electron available in its outer shell for which I will change colors and place near the hydrogen atom here and here. Having addressed the question of why water is important in biology, let's turn our attention to what properties water possesses that makes it so different from any other liquid. Here I'll list the important biological properties then review each of them in brief detail. These properties include polarity of the water molecule, the cohesion and adhesion properties of water, the temperature stabilizing effects of water, and water as the universal solvent. Let's look more closely at these properties one at a time. As we take another look at the structural model 
of the water molecule that we created earlier, you recall that oxygen is the eighth element found in the periodic table of elements. Its relative location in the periodic table is further to the right of hydrogen, making it more electronegative than hydrogen and the other elements to the left of this position as well. So let's indicate oxygen's relative electronegativity by placing a negative sign here. Hydrogen is the first element in the periodic table. The two hydrogen atoms possess a positive charge for which I'll change colors and then place a positive sign here and here. Hydrogen and other elements situated left of oxygen in the table are more electropositive. The water molecule, therefore, by nature of its degree of electronegativity at one end or pole, and by nature of its degree of electropositivity at the other end or pole, cause the molecule to possess the property known as polarity. And I will draw the term here to denote this effect. And even though water molecule displays polarity with electronegative and electropositive charges at its opposite ends, the overall charge on the molecule itself is neutral. So it is said to have a net charge of zero. Again, polarity is an important property of water. Here is another important effect of polarity. Water, because of its polarity, forms hydrogen bonds with polar molecules other than just water. These other molecules, which I will illustrate here, include sugars, such as glucose, fructose, or ribose, organic molecules, such as ethanol, and inorganic molecules, such as ammonia. We see examples of this hydrogen bonding used commercially in the sale of alcoholic beverages containing sugars added to flavor them. In human anatomy and physiology, we know that water bonds to ammonia in the kidney before being excreted in the urine as the nitrogen waste product known as urea. The term for this attraction of one polar substance for another is hydrophilic, meaning water-loving. This hydrophilic attraction is enhanced by the polarity of the water molecule and the hydrogen bonding at the site of oxygen's two pair of unbound electrons. Finally, there is one more effect of polarity that I will review here before we move on. Just as there is a hydrophilic attraction of water to other polar molecules, the opposite effect occurs with nonpolar molecules. Here we have the same water molecule you saw earlier, but instead of attracting a nonpolar molecule such as a lipid, there is a repelling force between the two molecules. This effect of repulsion between water and nonpolar molecules is referred to as a hydrophobic effect, meaning water hating. Life itself depends on the crucial interplay of these two opposing effects of water. From the lipid 
bilayer membrane that comprises the trillions of cells within our bodies to the hydrogen bonds found in the double helix of DNA all depend on the polar hydrophilic hydrophobic properties of water. You have probably observed how an oily film floats on top of water demonstrating the hydrophobic effect of polar water and a non-polar liquid. This next property of water actually involves two effects that is referred to as water's cohesion and adhesion properties. These properties contribute to the uniqueness of water in biology. And while these properties are somewhat similar, they are also quite different from one another. Let's define cohesion first. Cohesion refers to the ability of molecules to resist separating from one another. You have probably observed this property many times, though perhaps never really thinking of it as a property at all. Examples include the water of a river or lake parting as a water skier carves a path behind a speedboat. Another example is a surfer observing the curl of a breaking wave offshore of a beach. In each case, water molecules are held together by cohesive forces rather than scattering in all directions. This cohesive property of water is possible because of hydrogen bonding, which creates a surface tension which tends to keep water molecules together rather than dispersing apart. Cohesion, therefore, is an essential property in all living things, from plants that draw nutrient-filled water from the ground, or humans whose cells and plasma contain life-sustaining amounts of water. A property of water very similar to cohesion is adhesion. Adhesion is the attraction of molecules of one kind for molecules of a different kind. This property can be quite strong for water and especially with other molecules bearing positive and negative charges. But let me give you a better understanding of adhesion through an actual example. Adhesion is taking place when it causes a drop of water to be sticky on or at the end of the leaf of a plant following a rainfall, preventing it from dropping to the ground by the force of gravity. Cohesion is operating here too, but you can't see it directly because it's occurring within the drop of water at the molecular level. It is cohesion allowing the water molecules to stick to each other, forming a drop. It is adhesion causing the drop to stick to the leaf, preventing it from falling to the ground at least immediately. A third property making water so important in biology is its ability to stabilize temperatures. Water achieves this effect via two mechanisms. One involves heat conservation, while the other involves heat loss. Let's first review water's heat conservation mechanism. By using their hydrogen bonds, water restricts the movement of individual water molecules and by doing so reduces the amount of the heat produced by kinetic energy. Water, compared to other liquids, is therefore able to absorb more heat before it gets hotter. It stores and holds heat much like a heat reservoir while keeping the temperature of the surrounding air or the surrounding cells, tissues, 
or blood plasma relatively stable. Examples include the lake effect. Lake water warms during the summer and then gives off its stored heat during the winter, making the air temperature surrounding the lake area warmer. Another example is that when a lake freezes, the ice usually covers so much thickness on the surface of the lake and acts as a protective covering, keeping the water temperature below the ice above freezing point. Water in human cells and in blood plasma, accounting up to 95% water, act as a heat reservoir trying to maintain a homeostasis of the body's internal environment. It is always important for blood being given as a transfusion to be administered through a blood warmer at 37 degrees Celsius to prevent hypothermia and other possible cold blood transfusion complications. Using the same property of its temperature stabilizing effects, water is also capable of achieving the opposite effect of heat conservation, namely the ability to cause heat loss. Evaporation of water from the skin has the opposite effect of conserving heat. The process of evaporation causes a decrease in the surface temperature of water, whether this decrease in temperature is from skin or from any surface. Finally, when water reaches freezing, which is a temperature of 0 degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit, individual water molecules move less and less as hydrogen bonds reduce their rate of breakage. They become a rigid lattice pattern of bonding. Though this lattice is less dense than liquid water and can therefore float on top of water. Before I review why water is called the universal solvent, let's review the definition of a solvent and a solute. A solvent is a substance, usually a liquid, that dissolves other substances. The dissolved substance is called the solute. Many of the unique properties of water already discussed make it an excellent solvent, allowing polar and ionic substances to easily dissolve in it. A solvent, such as water, will dissolve a solute when its molecules surround the ions and molecules of the solute, keeping those ions or molecules dispersed. This is very important to every living thing on Earth. It means that wherever water goes, either through the ground or through our bodies, it takes valuable chemicals, minerals, and nutrients along with it. Of course, water may also take with it natural or industry-related contaminants, such as arsenic or fertilizers, making it essential from a public health standpoint to monitor water sources for levels of unsafe exposures. This concludes the video on water and biology.